good morning so we continue our journey of uh, studying solid geometry uh, so yesterday i in the previous class we saw uh, general concepts about uh, distance formula for distance between two points and uh, section formula and things like that today we will further continue studying our solid geometry which essentially includes direction cosines direction ratios and things like that so what are direction cosines <clears throat> so you think of a uh, three dam so let me uh, so let oa be a straight line passing through the origin in a three dimensional space that means what's a three dimensional space i have a x axis y axis and a z axis typically you must look at corner of a room and if you are facing the corner from in, standing inside the room face the corner to your left x axis will be the line on the floor to your left where the floor meets the wall and y axis will be to your right uh, on the floor and z axis is the vertical line so typically this is x axis red line green line is y axis blue line is z axis this side is positive x axis this side is negative x axis this is positive y axis this is negative y axis this is positive z axis this is negative z axis any point here can be given by three coordinates 3 comma 4 comma 5 means 3 on x axis 4 on y axis 5 on z axis some point wherever it comes so this is what you have to keep in mind this is the geometry this is the basic setup in which we will use uh, solve all our geometry problems uh, so now what you do is you take a, a straight line passing through the origin so oa be a straight line passing through the origin in a three dimensional space origin means the point where all three axes meet together that's the corner in your mind so take a straight line passing through that corner that's essentially what it says uh, now this straight line intersect x axis at origin because anyway x axis passes through origin and this line is also passing through origin similarly the straight line will in meet y axis at origin meet z axis also at origin now consider the angle between the line and x axis i'll denote it as alpha and angle between the line and y axis i will denote it as beta angle between the line and z axis oh by the way all these three axes i'm saying is a positive axis means positive angle between the line and the positive x axis is alpha angle between the line and positive y axis is beta angle between the line and positive z axis is gamma now i will consider oh sorry uh, I, I will consider cos alpha cos beta cos gamma don't ask me why i am doing this cos immediately uh, that's important thing i mean it's useful for computation so cos alpha cos beta cos gamma is defined to be the direction cosines of oa that's the line the line you started with its direction cosines are defined to be cos alpha cos beta cos gamma where alpha beta gamma are the angles made by the line with positive x axis positive y axis and positive z axis let us maybe we should try to see a picture so here is my three dimensional uh, uh, space so i am picking up a point somewhere here so a is a point this is the point a is 2.54 4.69 4.81 that means x coordinate is 2.54 i come here 2.54 y coordinate is 4.69 so i come somewhere here and z coordinate is 4.81 so i come here so this is point a and now i join o is the origin so i join origin with uh, this a so i'll draw a straight line straight line passing through this and this point so this is the straight line this is o a o is the uh, origin 
So now you can see, of course, I can keep changing the point, then the line also will change. You can see that as the point moves, the line is also changing. I'm moving the point. You can see in the top left corner, the coordinates of A are changing. In fact, that coordinate is not changing. For that, I have to do something more. That's okay. Don't bother. You understand this. You can try to see it from different points of view also. For example, I can move the graphic view itself. You can see. So this is the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and the line is there. Now what I want to do is, let me fix up three points on the axis. Uh, this is just a GeoGebra specification. Don't bother too much about it. I'm just marking three points on the x, y, and z axis. Okay. And also this origin. Yeah, that is, I'll call this intersect. In this, they have given it as B, I'll just convert it to O because our notation is O is the uh, origin. So I'll call this O. Here it is. This is O. Intersect of x axis, z axis, and y axis. Okay. So uh, uh, let's go back. So this is the line passing through A. A itself can be moved as I said. Now this line makes angles with positive x axis, positive y axis, and positive z axis. Let us try to compute that. See, angle between A, angle at O between A. O and this point, whatever this point is. So you can see the angle there. Mm, I'll show it to you in the uh, rotated uh, thing. See here, you can see the angle. Angle between the line and positive x-axis, which is the positive red line. You can see that. Correct? This is called alpha. This is the angle between the straight line and the uh, positive x-axis. You can see that. The angle is changing as I move this point angle is changing you can see here this is the angle alpha you can keep seeing as I move a the angle is changing uh, naturally as expected to be see angle is changing angle between the straight line and uh, the given straight line and x-axis similarly I will want to talk about angle between the straight line and y-axis how do I do that so let me compute it here. Angle between the line at origin, of course, and y-axis, which is the uh, green uh, line. Oops, sorry. Again, let me, I think I have done some small mistake. Let me restart. So A and O and Oh, it's done already. Okay. Okay. So let me just check one minute. I think there's some problem. Let me check this. No, beta is it's showing something else. Sorry. Just one minute. I'll, I made some mistake. So I'll change this. O D A L. This is wrong. I'm sorry. Just one minute. Let this be there. Okay. This is okay f and z axis this is correct so beta is the only thing which is wrong so let me get that beta correct this angle between this line and positive uh, y axis that is here it's not coming just one minute. I think there is some problem with this GeoGebra version. No, this is not what I want. Just one minute. I want to show you that angle. Basically, I'm trying to show you what that angle is between this line and Z axis. That's what I'm trying to do. But some problem and it is not showing that. Let me just see Y axis and the line both are visible in this well yeah okay so let me try once more a o and d so why is this not coming
E O and D. This is what I want, but I don't know why it is not coming. A. I want to pick the point O. It's not selecting. I'm sorry, there seems to be some problem with selecting that origin. Uh, why it is not coming, I don't know. But anyway, you can see in the picture, the angle between the line and red line, red axis, red line that is positive x axis, that is alpha. Angle similarly, which is not marked here, that is between the line and this positive y axis. This is this green line and angle between line and z axis which is this angle which is called gamma actually but here it's mentioned uh, wrong thing here. no this is wrong this i don't want angle gamma is between the line and blue line this line oa and the blue line that is gamma similarly it should have been showing angle between the line and positive y axis but somehow it is not showing i don't want to waste my time on that but I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. When I move this point, see the line makes angle with all three coordinate axes. One is alpha, one is beta, one is gamma. So you can see it all changing in the picture. Uh, angle between this line and positive x axis, angle between this line and positive y axis, angle between this line and positive uh, z axis. You can see that. I just want you to get used to this picture. That's why I'm spending so much time on uh, showing you the picture. See, the angles between the line and positive x-axis, positive y-axis, and positive z-axis. These are alpha, beta, gamma. We are interested in cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. We call them as direction cosines of the line. That is the definition. So OA is the straight line passing through the origin in a three dimensional space. You take the angle between the line and the coordinate axis, X axis is alpha, Y axis is beta, Z axis is gamma. Then direction cosines of the line is defined to be cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. This is a triplet, all three numbers you have to say. Uh, direction, okay, this is for a direction cosine of a line passing through origin. What if the line doesn't pass through origin? then what you do is you draw a line parallel to the given line passing through origin you do a parallel translate you take any line which is not passing through origin then you draw a line parallel to that passing through the origin for this new line i can talk of direction cosines means that new line will make an angle alpha beta gamma with the coordinate axis then i can talk of cos alpha cos beta cos gamma these three numbers are direction cosines of the original line also so that's how even if it doesn't pass through we talk about direction cosines basically it says direction means which direction it, the line is heading towards that's what direction cosines say cosine because we have taken cosines cos, cos of alpha cos beta and cos gamma clearly if two lines are parallel they have same direction cosines because there will be one exactly one line passing through origin parallel to either of those lines so that's uh, direction cosines of parallel lines must be the same this is an important thing for the problems if you have two lines parallel the direction cosines are same so let us check first direction cosines of easy lines easy lines means now for example if this a comes on uh, z axis uh, sorry x axis so that means uh, i'll bring it right up to the uh, x y x, I, i'm trying to make this line as uh, x axis so see this line if it comes on x axis then the angle between the line and x axis is zero angle between the line and the x axis is zero so cos zero is one similarly angle between not similarly angle between the line and y axis is 90 degrees pi by 2 so cos pi by 2 is 1 angle between the line and z axis is pi by 2 so cos pi by 2 is 0 so direction cosine of the line 
x-axis, if line itself is x-axis, then direction cosine of x-axis is 1, 0, 0. Because angle it makes with x-axis is 0, cos 0 is 1. Angle it makes with y-axis is pi by 2, which is 90 degrees. So cos pi by 2 is one uh, 0. Similarly, angle x-axis x axis makes with z-axis is 90 degrees. Cos of whose is 0. So uh, uh, the uh, direction cosines of x-axis is 1, 0, 0. Similarly, direction cosine of y-axis is 0, 1, 0. Because y-axis makes an angle 90 degrees with x-axis. So cos 90 is 0. Y-axis makes angle 0 with y-axis, which is cos 0 is 1. Y-axis makes 90 degrees with z-axis, so cos 90 is 0. Similarly, direction cosine of z-axis is 0, 0, 1. So these are the basic three basic lines whose direction cosines we have computed. Another thing is, um, I want to talk of direction cosines uh, of a line OP. Then I want to talk of coordinates, relation between direction cosines and coordinates of a point on that line. So let us take some line OP, O is the origin, P is a point, some point whose length is, the length of OP is R, small r. So then what I want to claim is coordinates of OP is RL, RN, RN, then LMN are the, oh by the way, LMN are the standard notations for direction cosines, means when it, normally in this subject, LMN stands for cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. So if LMN or direction cosines of some line OP and OP itself is of length R, line segment R, then the coordinates of P are RL, RM, RN. Uh, how do I know that? I'll show you. Let coordinates of P be X, Y, Z. Then L is direction cosine. L is cos of alpha. Alpha is the angle between uh, OP and X axis. But that is equal to x by r because x coordinate by the hypotenuse. So maybe you want to see the picture. Oh, okay, there is a picture here only. I'll show you this. Here. O origin is here. P is here. OP. And this is the x coordinate of P. This is the y coordinate of P. This is the z coordinate of P. So OA is the x coordinate of P. OB is the y coordinate of P. OC is the y co z coordinate of P. So that means this is x and this angle AOP in this picture is alpha. Similarly, BOP is beta. COP is gamma. Ka alpha, beta, gamma. Now let us check what is cos alpha. Note from if this is A, O, A, how did I get A? I drop a perpendicular from P to X axis. That is what X coordinate of P is X means on X axis from O I come distance A, uh, distance X and from on Y axis I go a distance Y and at, uh, on Z axis I go a distance X z so o a is x o b is y o z o c is c so cos alpha so this angle o a p is 90 degrees because p from p i drop a perpendicular to x axis which it will intersect x axis at a so this is perpendicular 90 degrees because three dimensional does not look 90 degrees here but it is 90 degrees this angle is 90 degrees o a p is 90 degrees so cos alpha, alpha is an angle in that triangle AOP. This angle AOP is alpha. So cos alpha is adjacent side by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is OP because right angle is at A. OP is hypotenuse and its length is R. I told you point P is at a distance R from origin. So cos alpha is X by R. This is what it's been told here. Cos alpha is x by r, which means x is equal to lr. Similarly, y is equal to rm because m is equal to y by r and n is equal to n is cos gamma, which is z by r. So z is equal to rm. 
So you get all these things. So P coordinates of P is RL, RM, RN. This is a standard result. Mm, so whatever I told is mentioned here in detail. You can go through this at your leisure. Uh, so in right hand, so this is what I have told already. So uh, important thing is this. So cos alpha is x by r, cos beta is y by r, cos gamma is z by r. If you take cos square alpha, you'll get x square by r square. Cos beta, if you take it as y square by r square, cos gamma is z square by r square. If you add all of them, you'll get x square by r square plus y square by r, r square plus z square by r square. If you carry out this computation, you'll get x square plus y square plus z square by r square. But x square plus y square plus z square is r square because so Pythagoras theorem, you apply twice. So r square by r square is one. So what important result you get is cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is one. So this is a very important result. Always uh, keep this in mind. Cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is one, which means if you tell me two of the cosines, I can find the third one. That means if you tell me alpha and beta, I can figure out what gamma is because always it is true that cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is one. So if you know cos square alpha and cos square beta, then I can find cos square gamma. So in general, so cos square alpha means L square. This is a standard notation as I told you. So L square plus M square plus N square is one. This is a very important result. So let us try to see some problems. Mm, so find direction cosines of a line in XY plane, which make equal angles with X and Y axes. So think of a line which is on XY plane. So think of the corner in the room you are standing on the floor, which is the XY plane. So you have a line on the floor and it makes equal angles with X and Y axis. So with X axis also, it makes same angle as what it makes with Y axis. Because it's on XY plane, if the angles have to be equal, both of them will have to be equal to 45 degrees. The line is in the XY plane and makes equal angles with X and Y axis means both these angles have to be 45 degrees. So alpha is 45 and beta is 45. So cos alpha, cos beta, I know. Now, what about gamma? That means what is the angle between the line on the floor, x, y plane and z axis? Obviously, it's 90 degrees. So cos 90 is 0. So gamma is 90. So direction cosines is cos 45, cos 45, cos 90. Cos alpha, this is the angle it makes with x axis. This is the angle it makes with y axis. This is the angle it makes with z axis. So this is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0. I hope it's clear what I'm trying to tell. If you take a line, which is the line, oops, sorry. Then, oops, sorry, sorry, I'm going somewhere else. Uh -huh. This line, if it is on X, Y axis, and if it is uh, making equal angle with, uh, you see, if it's making equal angle with both x-axis and y-axis, these angles are 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Alpha is 45 and beta is also 45. Gamma is 90 degrees. It's the angle between the blue line and the line. So that's what I showed you here, shown you here in uh, these slides. So cos 45, cos 45, cos 90, which is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0. Okay, good. Ah, one thing you want to, I want to make an observation is that, see, this is L, this is M, this is N. I told you L square plus M square plus N square must be one, which is true here because one by root two whole square is one by two. This is also one by root two whole square is one by two. This zero square is zero. So half plus half plus zero is one. So uh, uh, observe this. This is what we proved just now, which is true in this case also. Find the direction cosines of the line in YZ plane, which makes an angle 30 degrees with Y axis. Now, the question is something else. Find the direction cosines of the line in yz plane. Now the, your line lies in yz plane. So uh, I will have to move it first so that it comes to yz plane. So it's here and it is moving. It is in such a way that it's angle with, so you can see that. Its angle with y axis is something, 
z axis is something obviously its angle with x axis is 90 degrees because it's in y z plane it's in the y z plane the line is in y z plane so its angle with uh, x axis is 90 degrees as you can see correct that's the line the black one is the line and the angle between the black line and the red line is 90 degrees angle between the green line positive green line and the line is it says uh, it makes 30 degrees with y axis so obviously if it if this angle is 30 degrees th that means beta is 30 degrees gamma has to be 60 degrees because this is in the plane y z plane i hope that point is clear from the picture so i'm writing it down here since the line is in y z plane it makes an angle of 90 degrees with the x axis so that means alpha is 90 degrees and cos alpha is 0 and since the line is in yz plane the angle between the and angle between the line and y axis is 30 degrees its angle with z axis is 60 degrees so beta is 30 degrees cos beta is root 3 by 2 gamma is 60 degrees cos gamma is half cos 60 so direction cosines are 0 root 3 by 2 and 1 1 by 2 so you can see again I, I hope this is clear this is cos alpha alpha is 90 degrees this is cos beta beta is 30 degrees this is cos gamma gamma is 60 degrees so this is 0 root 3 by 2 and half now you, again you observe here 0 square plus root 3 by 2 whole square that will become 3 by 4 half whole square is 1 by 4 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4 becomes 1 so sum of the direction cosines is again equal to 1 as we had proved already l square plus m square plus n square equal to 1 so let's try to complicate a bit more if a line makes 120 degrees with x axis and 45 degrees with y axis what angle does it make with z axis that means what have they given alpha is given to be 120 degrees because the line is making angle 120 degrees with x axis beta is 45 degrees because the angle made by line and y axis is 45 now i want to know what is gamma that means what is the angle it makes with z axis positive z axis all this is positive z axis so alpha so now i know cos alpha cos beta i know i want to find gamma so how do i do that i'll use this so first let me find out what is cos alpha these are standard uh, your puc results l is equal to cos alpha which is cos 120 which is minus half and similarly cos uh, this must be beta i have made a mistake here so let me change it this is beta m is cos beta how do i write it yeah, this is what it should be. Uh, cos beta, which is cos uh, 45, because beta is 45. So cos 45 is 1 by root 2. That's correct. And now I'll use L square. So this is L and this is M. I'll use L square plus M square plus N square is 1 to find N, which is cos gamma. So that means N square is equal to 1 minus L square minus M square. So I found L is minus half and M is 1 by root 2. So I carry out this computation. 1 minus minus half whole square minus 1 by root 2 whole square. So this is 1 minus 1 by 4 minus half, which is 1 minus 1 by 3, uh, 1 minus 3 by 4, which is 1 by 4. So N is equal, N square is 1 by 4. So N is equal to plus R minus root 2, which means gamma is cos inverse of plus R minus 1 by root 2. Uh, which means gamma gamma is cos inverse of plus r minus 1 by root 2 which means gamma is 45 degrees or 135 degrees i should have written in radians but anyway, now i'll continue with uh, uh, degrees because I, I mean it's better in university level we use radians but i by mistake i have written in uh, degrees it's okay pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4 so this is n so this is what i was telling you if you know angle between x axis if you know angle between the line and x axis and if you know the angle between the line and y axis then i can find the angle between line and the z axis that's precisely what we have done here now there is a next concept which is called direction ratio so let me explain this l m n b direction cosines of a line that means i have a straight line whose direction cosines are l m n that means i have a line passing through origin 
its angle it makes angle alpha beta gamma with the coordinate axis cos alpha is l cos beta is m cos gamma is n now any triplet a b c which is proportional to l m n is called direction ratio of that line what does it mean to say proportional it just means that you take l m n multiply by any real number for example you multiply by 2 you get 2 l 2 m 2 n that is called direction ratio of that line why 2 you can multiply by 3 yes 3 l 3 m 3 n that is also direction ratio why 3 i can multiply by root 2 yeah root 2 l root 2 m root 2 n that is also direction ratio uh, of the same line so that's what i explained here proportional means abc is rl rm rn for some non zero number r any non zero number r you take multiply lmn by that non zero number you will get end up with another triplet that is called direction ratio for example in this previous example we saw the line has direction cosines equal to 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 cos 45 cos 45 cos 90 remember now you multiply this whole thing by root 2 you will get 1 1 0 1 1 0 so that's the direction ratio of the same line so direction cosine is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 direction ratio is 1 1 0 well it need not be just root 2 i can multiply it by 2 also if i multiply this by 2 root 2 or multiply this by 2 i'll get 2 2 0 that is also a direction ratio nothing special about 2 i can multiply by minus 5 i'll get minus 5 minus 5 0 i can multiply this by just 2 this direction cosine so i'll get 2 by root 2 2 by root 2 0 which is root 2 root 2 0 so all these are direction ratios so direction ratios are not unique direction cosines are unique so you take direction cosine multiply by any real number you will end up with a direction ratio so in the next example we saw direction cosine was 0 root 3 by 2 half so if you multiply by 2 you will get 0 root 3 1 that's the direction ratio of this line similarly you can multiply by anything it doesn't matter 0 3 root 3 0 minus 5 root 3 minus 5 0 6 2 root 3 etc are all direction ratios of this line in each case i have multiplied 0 root 3 by 2 half that is the direction cosine by some number here if i multiply by 2 i get this here if i multiply by root 3 2 root 3 i will get this if i multiply this by minus 5 then i'll get this minus 5 by uh, sorry minus 10 if i multiply this then i'll get this if i multiply this by uh, 2 into 2 ala 6 uh, i want 6 12 root 3 not 12 6 root 3 no 2 root 3 if i multiply this by to 4 root 3 sorry if i multiply this by 4 root 3 i'll get this like this what i'm trying to tell is you take any real number multiply this by that real number you will get some numbers some set of numbers that's a direction ratio here are examples of direction ratios one very easy thing to see is this is very important from your examination point of view if i have given a line whose direction ratios are a b c then its direction cosines are if a b c are given plus or minus a by root of a square plus b square plus c square etc etc this is the direction cosine of that line direction cosines are unique up to sines of course plus or minus it's both are uh, both are same in some sense so this formula you will need if you know direction ratio you should know how to find direction cosine uh these are some more formula which you need to know i won't give the proof of it you please remember this formula direction ratios of the line joining two points so if i'm given two points x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 then the direction ratio of the line joining these two is x2 x1 y2 z2 minus one this is just formula doing it here so once i know direction ratio i can find direction cosine also uh angle between the lines that means Uh, 
of the direction of the line so take a line which are equally inclined to the coordinate axis so that means all three axes must be equally inclined inclined means alpha equal to beta equal to gamma which means cos alpha must be equal to cos beta equal to cos gamma now you know the direction of the line so direction cosines of line equally inclined to the coordinate axis is this is what i want to prove so line is equally cos beta cos gamma are equal because alpha beta gamma are equal but then i know Square equal to one, which means L is equal to you know L is equal to one by root three. 